Hello, and welcome to Your Princess's Problematic Podcast. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is a show where we watch kids' movies or movies who could be seen by kids and then give our adult opinions about them. <laughs> I liked Kid Adjacent. <laughs> what? I mean, technically, every movie could be seen <laughs> by really kids. True. Exactly. <laughs> I'm broadening our horizons. We, are, we can now watch every movie, guys. Yeah. I'm excited. It is. Uh, that sounds perfect. Now all the movies. No more kids. I will so. say, this was very refreshing. This, it really was. Yeah, this is our second week in our... Yeah. This is the, our second... This is our second week in our PMSman in new our, schedule. Yeah, in our Pumsman cycle. Yeah, welcome to our Pumsman cycle. <laughs> we gotta come up with this something. Sounds like, <laughs> this sounds like... <laughs> the world's worst new like like fiction yes. series yes. like young adult series the Poomsman cycle <laughs> that's just what we should call it the cycle. <laughs> do you want to tell everybody what our Poomsman cycle is Thomas? so our Poomsman cycle is as follows we'll first do a princess movie and then we'll do a Marvel Marvel movie slash mm-hmm. superhero movie mm-hmm and then we're going to do whatever series we're doing. Right now we're doing Harry Potter. Word. We're three three movies slash books into that. Mm-hmm. We're do something after that, done with that. Maybe we'll do Lord of the Rings. Maybe we'll do Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll do Hunger Games. Hunger Games. That's my vote. Cheryl no. mentioned that she wanted to guest star on Pirates of the Caribbean. If we ever get maybe we'll do Pirates of the Caribbean. I, d- I, ta- I, I don't know, because the only good one is the first <laughs> One. I've actually yeah. only seen the first one, and when I say I've seen it, I have fallen asleep watching it three different times. That's I've fair. I've never seen it all the way through, <laughs> and my sister screams that it's an amazing movie. I really so. like it. Cheryl and, and I have watched it multiple times. The first together, one is good. So. Yeah, the first one is good. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll probably just, I told her we'd yeah. probably just do the first one. Yeah. But. yeah. And then uh, we'll do another. The week uh, four. Week four is a non princess kids movie. Mm-hmm. That's like so Big that's Hero your, Six. That's your Pixar's and that's Pixar's, your DreamWorks's yeah. and that's your Illuminations's and that's your Minions's and all that kind of stuff. And then week five is kind of being like a new release or a request or uh, whatever we feel like doing. There could and be an adult movie. It could be mm-hmm. RoboCop. Yeah. Could be RoboCop. <laughs> Thomas is. <laughs> Thomas Maybe would really we're gonna like, watch the room. I don't know. <laughs> Thomas would. Could be I the think, room. Yeah. I think if there was an adult movie that Thomas could make us like would have the like biggest force vote for, and put a gun to our head. Oh, and force okay. Us on the to count of three, it. I want you to say what movie you think it is at the same time as me. Okay. <gasps> okay. Hold on. Do you want to think for a second? No, I got it. Okay. One, two, three. Space the Matrix. Balls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who didn't catch that, that was the simultaneous Spaceballs and Matrix, and yes, I would do both of those. <laughs> the answer to that <laughs> is yes. yes. <laughs> both are correct. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Continue, Thomas, with your intro. This week, for our first superhero movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, actually, no, because we did the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. We did do it, But it's the not Spider-verse. part of this. Yeah. True. Verse. True. Our first official. This is our, our first, first officially planned. This is our this is our first mm, pus, in pusman, the Pimsman. In the Pimsman cycle. superhero movie in the cycle. Mm-hmm. And we are going chronologically through the Marvel MCU universe. That's right. And that means this week we're talking about Captain America, the first one. <laughs> hey. The Captain America, the first Avenger, the musical. <laughs> Did you know that that's Jessica over there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Nikki. Do you know who you're supposed to be this week? And I'm Thomas. No, you're supposed to be T. Dizzle this week. I am? Didn't you see that in our messages on Facebook <laughs> Messenger? No, I didn't. Somebody not. messaged us and they were like, I hope Thomas introduces himself as T. Dizzle this week. <laughs> And I'm T. Dizzle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you want to do that again? Nope. Okay. He's, he's that was it. so like honky tonk <laughs> down home. <laughs> I'm T. Dizzle, y'all. <laughs> Bring in some moonshine. Princess and the Frog was last. <laughs> y'all tongue. follow the bouncing butt. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, that is who we are deep inside. This movie who are is you? a musical. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this, this movie is a musical. All those girls dancing with the, with the flag. Yeah, this movie very... has a has a legitimate musical number in it. Yeah, it does. 
That's true. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, there. get there. Yes. So let us begin. Let us. I want to hear Nikki mm-hmm. tell us what your experience with this movie is first. Because I think that I think Jessica has more to say about it. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, mine's cute. Yours is cute. That's why I want to hear it. Okay. So when this movie came out on DVD is when I actually heard about it. I don't remember hearing about it being in the movie theater or anything. Yeah, you like were it. still working at FanVid at yeah. this point, right? So it was. It came out when I was working at FanVid. I had no idea that they connected to the Iron Man movies, anything mm-hmm. like that. And remember when I said Iron Man came out, that I was like, there's more superheroes besides Spider-Man and Batman? Like, yeah. I didn't even know anything about it. So this cute boy came in to talk to me at Family Video, who I had gone on a date with, mm-hmm. who lived in Grand Blank. Ah. And his name was Thomas. <laughs> and I'm Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he offered, he, he that was the night that he told me all of the superheroes and he drew me like a big graph. Oh, okay. And yeah, I drew her a, like a Venn diagram of <laughs> like DC versus Marvel and heroes versus villains and like the groups and yeah. It was cute. such a good nerd. Thomas. I would describe it as a tree graph, not a Venn diagram. Because the Venn diagram is how they intersect. Yes, that suggests that the DC and Marvel characters intersect. Yeah. Which you, there was like, I think there had been one or two crossover comics, but mm-hmm. not really. Yeah. You drew a family tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Thomas. Yggdrasil, if you will. Yggdrasil. <laughs> <laughs> so Thomas offered to watch it with me. Mm-hmm. And so the very first time I ever saw this movie was with Thomas when we were in Friend Zone. Big yeah. time Friend nice. Zone. Not even like. Not even Friends with Benny's. Not even Friends with Benny's. We were still in Super Friend Zone. <laughs> oh. And so I watched it with Thomas. And I remember thinking it was super awesome. I was like, this is a really cool movie. And I was very I was very into it, and I was—I just had no idea that the Marvel universe was what it was. And mm-hmm. I had seen Iron Man at this point too, and I thought Iron Man was really cool too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my point is, the first time I saw this was with Thomas, actually, nice. and it was like, and it was the very first movie we ever watched together. Cute. I know, and I realized that when we were watching it together last night. I'm like, oh, the first time I watched this was with you. <gasps> this was our first movie together, and Thomas was like, that's cute. <laughs> The end. <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> uh, so I have not seen this movie until last night when I watched it. Crazy. I know. Uh, the first Marvel movie that I saw was Iron Man. The first. Uh, <laughs> Iron Man, the first one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the best one. Um also that. <laughs> was that the first Marvel movie that came out though? That was yes. the first one that came out. Mm-hmm. Okay, go on. Was was Iron Man the first? Release release, release order wise? Iron Man was first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um Yeah, I really liked it. I just kind of I liked it, but I didn't like care enough to be like kept in the loop as to when the other ones were coming out. So, oh, I You mean you liked Iron Man? Yeah, and and I was like, yeah, I liked Iron Man a lot, um, but just didn't feel the need to, like, keep on top of my Marvel, you know, stuff. I don't think I anticipated being as into it as I would be. And so I think that I want to say that the next time I saw a Marvel movie was The Avengers in the theater when it came out. I don't think I saw Thor before Avengers. Thor is a terrible movie. It was really bad, but but I also was like, okay, but I like the characters and I like Loki and I don't understand his motivation. Didn't you and Julie cosplay Thor and Loki or was that like one of your no, dream we're planning cos- to? Yeah. I could be wrong though. Maybe I did see. I don't know. Again, I have no memory of anything. You do not. So I don't. But I do know that I saw that Winter Soldier was the first Captain America movie that I saw. And and I kept thinking, like, I mean, I could go back and see the first cap, but I I think I get the basic gist, <laughs> and so why bother? Right. Mm. So I just never really, never really looked for it. Mm. But yeah, had you, I will tell you this. Had I known exactly how awesome the cast was of this movie, 
I probably would have watched it just on principle. Right. It's much earlier. Cast. It's got a really it's good a legit cast. cast. Yeah, when we got into it, I was like, oh my God, I love that person. Oh my God, I love that person. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> As I say every time I watch this movie, Tommy Lee Jones is in this every <laughs> single time we watch this. She does, this. every time. Every time we yeah. watch this. And Thomas goes, yeah, you say that every time we watch this. I'm like, I forget he's in it every time. Yeah. <laughs> And Stanley Tucci. And Stanley Tucci. And the Tucci. <laughs> the Tucci. Literally America's favoriteest actor. Tiamas. Yeah. Tell me about your history with this movie. So I saw this movie in the theater. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Thomas gets to be the Marvel elitist. <laughs> I'm so happy for you, Thomas. I'm happy for you. So yes. I saw Iron Man when mm-hmm. it came out. And. Up until that movie came out, superhero movies were sort of a joke. Yes. And when I saw Iron Man, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Super- wow, you can make cool a superhero again. movie that's just a good movie. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so after that, I started going to see all of the Marvel movies, and I was pretty happy with all of them. I even liked the Hulk. Mm-hmm. I like the Incredible which, Hulk. Sorry, which one? Yeah, when we do the this, Edward Norton one. When we do yeah. this, yeah. are we gonna do the Hulk one? Yeah, <laughs> the okay. Edward Norton one. Yeah, that one. It that counts. one's considered Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. Okay, Weird. it counts. That sounds great. Okay, can't wait. Okay, I don't think I've seen the Edward I Norton one. I also have not seen it. I like it. I think Thomas made me watch it with him. Once. Uh, I like, like I said, Thor is the weakest one. Mm-hmm. I really? think Hulk just gets a bad rap because there was a whole falling out with Edward Norton or something like mm. that. But but I was really impressed with Iron Man and I went to see this movie because I really like Captain America as a character. And I really liked this movie. I like that it's a period piece. I like mm-hmm. World War II movies. Mm-hmm. Like this is a really cool World War II movie. I liked mm-hmm. that. Like Chris Evans did a really, really good job mm-hmm. as Captain America. And he only gets better. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it yeah. was awesome. Mm-hmm. Great. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Not my favorite of the MCU, MCU movies, That's fair. but it's up there. That's fair. Yeah. I would actually, I would add it to probably my list of favorites yeah. now, now that I've seen it. Um, I will say, I am a sucker for origin story superhero movies. Yeah. So... I do like this. And it made me I'm it got me amped up and excited to watch the rest of them because I'm excited yeah. to watch Iron Man again because I remember Iron Man is I remember Iron liking really it good. so much and I have not like sat down and watched it since it was since we, it was released. I make, I make Nikki watch it periodically. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's, it, it's one of my favorites. It got me amped and I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I remember how I felt sitting in the theater watching Iron Man. That's right. I love superhero origin stories. <laughs> Guys, it's because we're doing not kids movies. <laughs> also that I'm so I'm so friggin' amped to not be but watching. A kid could watch this movie. <laughs> I would argue that a kid could watch I would say, any movie. I would say a kid could. A kid could watch, watch this movie, movie and not be scarred for that life. Should be, that should actually be the name of our podcast. A kid could watch this movie. <laughs> It'll just be like whatever movies we want. Trying to acronize that. A it. kid could watch this movie. Aquamuckdom. <laughs> it rolls right off the tongue A-K-C-W-T- just like if it does. Welcome back to AKCWTM. <laughs> Aquatum. <laughs> No, it's terrible. No, we can't change this now. We're in it to win it. So we're um, thirty-three episodes deep. We can't change it now. (laughs) Indeed. So I have just a couple things about Captain America in general, like as a character. Okay. This is actually fairly close to his like real life comic book origin. He was he was created during World War II. Mm-hmm. In 1941 was his comic book debut. Mm-hmm. Wait, he really was re- created created during World War II, like IRL. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, he was basically he was created during World War II as a propaganda thing by the United States to kind of get people, uh, you know, to support the war effort and stuff. In the comic book, he, uh, like he debuts with. His sidekick Bucky, who's like a 
15 year old teenager who works at the camp that he's training at. Mm -hmm. So they changed that a little bit. So there's a little less of like child endangerment stuff. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) Did you know that Bucky is in the Martian? (laughs) Did you see the movie Martian? Yes. Uh So Thomas and I watched Martian this past Last weekend, Sunday night, for the first time. Like a week ago. No, no, no. Like we, because he didn't work, Thomas didn't work on Monday, and Mm -hmm. we were like, let's watch a movie that's not a kid's movie. And I was like, let's watch Martian. I love Martian. Mm -hmm. And we were watching it, and when Sebastian Stan Stan comes on screen, I was like, why does he look familiar? What do I know him from? He's cute. Mm -hmm. Who is he? And Thomas goes, that's Bucky, the Winter Soldier. And I was like, spoiler "Eh." alert. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. And so when this movie started last night, I go, oh, Sebastian Stan. And Thomas goes, do you know he's in The Martian? I was like, shut up. <laughs> That's all. I'm pretty sure we have to go over that every time you watch The Martian, too. Right. But yeah, um, did you guys have any other que- any questions about Captain America? Like, I should have written down the questions I was asking you while we were I watching I wrote down a couple that you asked me. Yeah, so just answer them as they come up. Uh, no, I was like, if I have anything, I'll text it yeah, to him. But the movie, but the, the movie is pretty close to it, what it actually was. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, here, I'm just going to show you this now. This is shot from an old, I figure you'll appreciate this. And that's Iron Man. Yes, but, it is. That is Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> is that real? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, don't we all need uh, some solid dick from Iron yeah. Man, though? <laughs> uh, I believe that we do. The evolution of language, right there. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh... Yeah, there's another one with uh, Batman and the Joker. They're talking about boners. Oh yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've I've got a, ca- a shot from an old Captain, probably an old Avengers comic book, and um, the the slang was. Very different. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll read I'll... it. And I want you to read it in character. <gasps> All right. <laughs> you have to be Captain Thomas. Okay. Still brooding, eh? Maybe what you need is some solid dick from an Iron Man. Maybe I do, Shellhead. Maybe I do. Maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> and that's how fan fiction starts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't have any questions about this movie, really. I do have a fun little fact from when I was, when I used to be on Tumblr. Oh. Back in the day. Yeah. Of me being on the internet constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody posted that they had, that they were, they were at a dentist appointment and he asked them what they were up to that day. And they were like, oh, I just went and saw the new Captain America movie. Yeah. And the dentist's like, oh, cool. Yeah, my son's in that. Click. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, it didn't click till after I left that my dentist's name is Dr. Evans. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, I thought he meant just like an extra or something, but his son what? is fucking Captain America. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was like all he said about it, too. It's just, oh, yeah, my son's in that. <laughs> like, great. <laughs> Yeah. Oh goodness! It wasn't it probably wouldn't have been as big a deal like when it came out when it first came out, yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. everyone was still like, "Yeah, an Avengers movie will happen." <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Captain. Yeah, <laughs> Captain America can get some <laughs> solid dick for me. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> oh goodness! So yeah. <laughs> so let's start the movie, shall we? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just remember what my first thing is that I was going to say. It's not till later. Yeah. Okay. So we open up on the Arctic. We do. And they're digging up this big old airplane. Mm-hmm. And I love how, how in the early Avenger, how in the early MCU movies, I love how clever they thought they were with their little Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, oh, it's Captain America's shield. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's like all this other stuff. And I was like, Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, we, no. we literally showed up to the movie titled Captain yeah, America. I'm pretty sure yeah. we were expecting that. It's yeah. fine, though. They got a lot more subtle with them nowadays. Yeah. But, like, the early 
the early days was mm-hmm. like, hey, did you know that Captain America's shield was a American flag? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was interesting, uh, the way that it, to me, how differently they wrote everything and how differently everything was presented compared to the Marvel movies now. Yeah. Right? I feel like the Marvel movies now are very just like jam as much as much action in as mm-hmm, we can mm-hmm. and then yeah. the rest is kind of just very, the pacing of this movie is pretty slow. It is very slow and yeah. all of the action, almost all the action aside from the chase scene um like right after he gets uh transformed <laughs> For lack of a better term. Uh, Aside from that, all of the action is done montage style. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, Yeah, it is pretty montage We get like three or four montage sequences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. So an interesting fact about the director of this movie. Guy who we do not know. Uh, What's his name? Jim something. Joe Joe Johnston. Mm -hmm. He was the director of The Rocketeer. Yes. Hmm. I don't know what that is. The reason Visually, they chose him. The reason they chose him is because the Rocketeer was also a World War II ish period superhero ish movie. Mm-hmm. So that's why he got picked to do this movie. I see. Since he had something similar before. Mm-hmm. I will say I yeah. wasn't expecting the way that it was set up like that, but I liked it a lot. Yeah. I liked that it left a little more freedom for like the storytelling. Rather than just the action scenes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I like that all of the action scenes, I mean, you purposely get just really cool shots right. <laughs> of yeah. them doing really badass things. That's it. Right. <laughs> like, that's yeah. all I need. That's Thank you. Need. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes, I do just want a basic still shot of him flying through the yeah. air looking sweet. Awesome. It is actually also helpful because this movie – more so than any of the other early movies, mm-hmm. had to set up a lot more stuff for the Avengers, mm-hmm. like the Tesseract. Right. Um, Stanley Tucci. Yggdrasil. Mm-hmm. Really, like, Thor had already come out, so that was already set up. But, right. But, but no, no, the, 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 whatever, what is it? The all, the life tree or whatever, Yggdrasil. We, we'll talk yeah. about it when we get to yeah. Thor. Um, how many of was them was connected to the Tesseract? What Marvel movies were out when this came out? Like what ones had already come out? Iron Man, Hulk, Thor. This was the fourth or fifth movie. I'm wow. Telling you, I'm telling you Iron Man 2 was out. I'm telling you. Go She's on. telling you. <laughs> it doesn't know what to do with that information, but he, he's been told. Maybe it did. Yeah, it did. I told yeah. you. Wow, really? That's why I said I'm like I Iron sw- Man three came out right after Avengers. Yes. But I remember Iron Man two coming out and people being like super disappointed in it, and I hadn't yeah. seen it, and I hadn't seen the first one either. And so I was Iron like, Man two came out maybe, before this yeah, movie. Yeah, it was okay. it was okay. Iron Man. Maybe Thor, that's why Iron I didn't 2, go Captain see America. this one is okay. because I was so disappointed you were put by, off Iron by Iron Man, Man two. two. Yeah, they don't have Hulk on here. Also, <laughs> yeah. Base four, Loki. yeah, but yeah, they had they had to set up a lot of stuff, yeah. for the Avengers I in this that. movie. Mm-hmm. So they had there's a lot of exposition stuff that they had to sneak in. And mm-hmm. I think the whole montage acting scenes kind of lent itself towards that. Then we get to hear Hugo Weaving's accent. We sure do. <laughs> I'm like, this is my first boyfriend that comes on the screen. <laughs> is this eyebrows, Hugo Weaving. Yes, eyebrows. Hugo Weaving is, according to Nikki, Hugo Weaving is eyebrows. <laughs> Hugo Weaving is so much more than eyebrows. How dare you? How very dare you? If you would let me force you to watch The Matrix, you would know this. The Matrix? Oh, he's the bad guy in The Matrix. Yeah, he's Agent Smith. Oh, he's also in Lord of the Rings. He's also Elrond in Lord of the Rings. He's also V in V for Vendetta. from from The Martian? The meeting of Elrond? I don't don't know the Lord of the Rings reference. I have not seen V for Vendetta. You've not? Have you seen V for Vendetta? I have seen V for Vendetta. He's also V for Vendetta. He's Agent Smith, and that's all I needed. Thanks. You're welcome. But what I wanted to know was, did they do something to make his eyebrows look that much eyebrows? They did not. (laughs) No, he just has eyebrows. He has eyebrows. (laughs) (laughs) The only thing that they did to him pre-Red Skull is they added some scars under his ears. Mm. That was it. Did you know that this guy was going to become Red Skull? Like when you watch Endgame and stuff and there's like Red Skull? Yes. I um, 
I mean, he was always Red Skull. He just shows up in. I, and no, I, I'm saying, did so. she know, like, when he was um, Mr. Smith? I knew that. I knew just through, like, being on the internet and stuff that Hugo Weaving was Red Skull. So when I saw Hugo Weaving come on, I was like, okay. okay. I didn't know that he was already established as Red Skull. Like, he, that's already who he was. I assumed that somewhere throughout the movie, he would, you know. Go oh. through the process of becoming Red Skull. Well, he does it off screen. Yeah, yeah I didn't really. Understand I appreciated that. That, that was yeah. very thoughtful of him. <laughs> More of that. Just let your mind do it. Exactly. Do but no, I I will say uh, regarding Red Skull in general in this movie, after watching Endgame and seeing that little like, you know, he was the the entity that was guarding the whatever the fucking sorry whatever the not in <laughs> would you like me to bleep you yes whatever the beep <laughs> thank you yeah. um stone was i can't remember what that one was he had the soul stone the soul stone yeah, yeah. uh what i he have? i assumed that he was like very um that he was like a major villain in previous movies that I had not seen. And I will say I was kind of underwhelmed by him in this movie. Yeah. He just has a lot of weapons that can do really crazy I never stuff. really felt threatened by him. No. And I didn't really yeah. understand his motivation other than just I want everything. It's hard that there's so many Marvel movies at this point, and I've probably seen a handful of them a couple of times, but most of them I've seen like once mm -hmm. in... I'm not very good at watching movies often. I'm usually on my phone or something. So when Thomas and I rewatch. Mm -hmm. You see things you didn't yeah. see before. Yeah. And so in my head, all that I have right now is Red Skull and Endgame. And I'm like, how did we get from him in this movie with the Tesseract and obviously no longer having the Tesseract at the uh -huh. end to him being in this soul stone right and he world. seemed like an all-powerful yeah. being when he was guarding so, the soul stone and I'm, i was like he must be a really right. legitimate so i'm wondering villain, like, is there stuff that happens in the middle that i just don't remember no. yet great so the he red, goes from red that skull to that? never never shows up again between this movie and infinity war really so i'm gonna just cover your children's ears real quick because i have a quick question <laughs> for thomas yes what the fuck? Beep. <laughs> so, I think that there are better explanations online. Okay. But here is what my general, very vague understanding of what happened. Mm -hmm. The Tesseract is the space stone. Mm -hmm. What happened when Red Skull touched the space stone, he was basically cast into space. Okay. Um, possibly to Vermeer which is where the soul stone was. Mm -hmm. The soul stone is considered by s most people to be semi-sentient. Okay. So at some point, the soul stone grabbed Red Skull and basically um, Made it do enthralled it him gotcha. as to be, to be the guardian of the soul stone. Oh, I see it. Okay. That's not, be that's believable. I, that doesn't bother me as much. Honestly, it's just like, because isn't in the comic books, isn't Red Skull like Captain America's ultimate villain? He So like Red Skull and Winter Soldier are like Captain America's nemeses. Okay. Uh, this – so Red Skull is just a continuation of Marvel. So I would say while I really enjoy the MCU movies, mm -hmm. they're really bad at making villains. They really, really are. Well, and this is just another example of a very forgettable villain. Yeah. So when Thomas and I went to go see Infinity War at the movie theater, I remember when we see Red Skull for the first time, I even whispered to Thomas, I was like, who the heck is this guy? And Thomas was like, that's Red Skull from Captain America. Like, he was, like, offended that I didn't know who he well, was. Yeah, obviously but now I'm worse. even I'm, I'm offended at Thomas because I'm like, he was in none of the other movies. And, <laughs> like, why would I have remembered this? So, oh, yeah. yeah. I, just, I just expected more of his character. And so I was a little underwhelmed by him. Yeah. But um, I love the actor. I love Hugo Weaving. Yeah, and it's a different actor in Infinity War. Oh, was it? Yeah. Huh. Hugo Weaving was uh, very meh towards this role. Yeah. So he, didn't, he wasn't really interested in coming back. So. Well, I mean, they didn't do a good job writing the villain, so I can he yeah. didn't have a lot to work with. Yeah. But um, 
But yeah, I've, I agree with you there. MC, that's my main complaint with the Marvel Universe yeah. is the villains. But they do the a only... really good job with their heroes. Yeah. And I feel like DC's the complete opposite. I feel like they really... Mm. I mean, they, they, they have way too many villains. Yeah. But... They're usually at least right. either fun or interesting in some yeah. way. The only villain in an MCU movie that I feel like was actual, like really well done was Thanos. I would agree with that. Yeah. Maybe Bucky would he was the winter soldier. Yes. Like, that was interesting to watch, yeah. but I think it was interesting because of the personal connection right. between them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I literally can't remember the names of most of the villains. Yeah, and, like, I can name the... a couple, but they're all just like, meh, whatever. What are you Loki? talking about? I feel like every time we'd watch one of the Marvel movies, Thomas is like, that's so-and-so, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, who is that? Who is that? I mean, who if, I know and who if, they are, if you consider Loki a villain, which right. he is, but he's not consistently he's a villain. He's like an anti-hero, he, right? I would say that, yes. He's like Catwoman. When he yeah. acts as a villain, I would say he is a good villain. Mm-hmm. I'd say he's a good anti-hero, yes. But yeah, other than that, I don't remember any of Thor's <laughs> villains. I don't remember anything about I remember Thor. who played them, but I don't remember their character names or what they were. I can name mother, I can yeah. name like Ultron. Yeah. Um, this is because it's in the name of one of the movie titles. Right, exactly. I just remember it because James Spader voiced it and that was bananas to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Guess who's sleeping? <laughs> Uh, nice. So she did not stay up forever. Everybody. She did not stay up forever. Yeah. Evie told we us tonight it. that she was going to stay up forever. And that's code to me saying that she's going to fall asleep soon. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Dad called it. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Hugo Weaving and his accent. What do you have a complaint about his yeah, accent, Thomas? What is it? <laughs> it doesn't an, sound German to me. It's an accent. It sounds like. <laughs> Stanley Tucci has a better accent. <laughs> oh, Stanley Tucci's German accent is fantastic. Very good. Because Stanley Tucci is America's hero. Yeah. That's America's ass. Hugo, <laughs> Hugo Weaving's German accent is confusing, <laughs> to say the least. Schedule. It is. It is. <laughs> he really likes saying schedule and he putting a lot your... of st- he likes putting a lot of stank on schedule. I know, really does. I know that I know that. The English tend to they say schedule. Like I know that that's uh-huh. how they say it. Like over there, <laughs> do Germans I also think so. say schedule? I would. Yeah, I, think so. I will. Okay. I don't. I know. guess I'm, I, don't I don't know. Well, I don't schedule know is German. a German word. So. Oh, is it? Yeah, S C H. Words that are words that are S C H. Oh no, or sorry. The Germans say schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when a We're word sorry, has Germany. usually when a word has S C H in the spelling, it originates from German. Hmm. Like Dorscher. Da. <laughs> Is your last name German? Yeah. <laughs> We're German. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, uh, my I'll fam- have the divorce papers written up for you immediately. <laughs> I already know that my mom's side is pretty German too. <laughs> what are you? Are you? Are you Swedish or Swiss? Swiss. Swedish. Swedish. That's different than Switzerland. Yes, those are different countries. I learned that in my tattoo appointment this past week <laughs> with my Lithuanian. Should I tell you? No, I back when I played World of Warcraft religiously, my guild leader was from Denmark. He was Danish. Yeah. My family also is Danish, so I know the difference between like the words Dutch and Danish and oh, stuff I do like not. that. I did not know that there were differences until this Dutch, Dutch is the Dutch language. Is from- Okay, so my World of Warcraft leader, mm-hmm. guild leader back in the day, uh, was from the Netherlands. And he spoke Dutch. And I used to piss him off all the time by referring to the country that he came from as Dutch. (laughs) He thought I legitimately believed that there was a country called Dutch. Wow. I even know that one. (laughs) So I tell him all the time to go back to Dutch where he (laughs) he belongs. (laughs) Uh, it was great. Um, he called vehicles venisols, and it was just what I just loved making fun of his dumb dumb accent. So. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of the apart from one of the Star Trek movies when Chekhov is going around New York City and he's like, "I'm looking for the nuclear vessels." <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Yep. See, my Dutch thing is mm-hmm. on Friends when. Joey and Chandler are fighting over a hot girl who's Dutch. Yeah. And they say, or Chandler is saying, like, where do Dutch people live, Joe? And he goes, 
um, uh, don't, some, some, and he goes, they live in the Netherlands. And Joey goes, ha, 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 here's just trying to trick me. The Netherlands are where Peter Pan and Tinkerbell <laughs> live. <laughs> like, I mean, you're probably not wrong there. But yeah, so the accent is is disappointing coming from a man with such a great voice. But yeah. but yeah, it was <laughs> he definitely just didn't give a crap. Right? No, he did not. <laughs> yeah, um, Hugo Weaving is boyfriend number one that's introduced. Stanley Tucci is boyfriend number two. Oh, I love Stanley Tucci. I, there are, I love some Tucci. There is a lot of eye candy. What about in this what movie. about Skinny Steve? Are we at to Skinny Steve? Let's talk about Skinny Steve. Okay. So I, I asked <laughs> Here's, the, here's okay. the question. Are you asking <laughs> what I boned down on Skinny Steve? <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> Dude, I would break him in the process. <laughs> that is a fragile, brittle man. <laughs> Skinny Steve is... Ask Thomas how many times I excl- exclaimed during this movie. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I told him to keep a tally, but he didn't want to keep a tally. I but, did not. Um, I love Skinny Steve. Uh, I Thomas told me once how they did the CG on mm-hmm. that, and I told him to be able. I know that it's like a different person's body, and they CG'd his head on mm-hmm. it. There's actually they use two different methods. Okay. So the second method was that where mm-hmm. they had a body double. And they were just CG. Did they Chris use Evans's. a twelve-year-old boy? Right, seriously. I think it was just a small guy they found. Shit, dude. Um, and they would just Beep. CG. <laughs> Dang, dude. <laughs> and they would just CG Chris Evans's face onto him. But for most of the time, they actually they had to shoot scenes four times. Mm-hmm. So they would shoot the scene once with everybody doing the scene normally with normal Steve. They would shoot it another time with Chris Evans doing it in front of a green screen by himself. Okay. They would shoot it another time with uh, all the actors without Steve doing the scene. Good lord! And then they shoot it a fourth time with a body double in case. Oh my god! In case they had to do that, and then they would take those three shots, composite them together, and shrink. Like you with with CG, just like shrink Steve down. Oh my lord! You know it makes sense to me though that they did those two methods because I think they did a really awesome job with the CG. But there are moments oh, where yeah. we get a little uncanny valley, and I think that it's I think it's the moments where they are using the body double and then put yeah. his because the his times, facial features are like completely yeah. disproportioned. It's yeah, the times the when the he's not moving very much. Yeah. Is when also they use that, the body double. yeah. Well, mm-hmm. and they they clearly have like a high collar on him to kind of hide it. Mm-hmm. I feel like too, like you don't ever really see like his neck to his shoulders mm-hmm. to his chest until he's like without yeah. a shirt on anyway. But for the most part. I feel like that was a way to hide yeah. it, maybe. No, Most, you're yeah, mostly face, it like, didn't. No. Mostly it didn't bother me, but I, I think thought, it was I, the... especially for us being a now nine-year-old movie. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, no, for it a holds nine-year-old up movie, well. it's definitely really holds good. up. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the only scene where it really, where I was like, oh, he looks like an alien. Uh, I think it was when he was in the car with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that part does look weird, and I'm like, looks it's like very weird. blatantly his face on a different person's yeah. body, yeah. and yeah. it's like, yeah. Oh, and they also is... they also used like um like different level walkways and apple crates and stuff mm-hmm. to make Chris be shorter. Yeah. than all the other actors and they also would like have the actors look at different marks Fun. on each other's faces so that they would look like they were looking down at him or he was looking up at them interesting yeah. huh hmm. this is smart yeah to be in the movies indeed you know what i mean just to be like i wouldn't have even i mean that would throw me off right i don't know if i'd be able to like well, that's Act why... as well as some people. Acting. That's why we're not actors. <laughs> and we podcast. Yeah. Indeed. Um, then we get to Stanley Tucci's accent, which mm-hmm. is much better than Hugo Weaving. Stanley Tucci is a gem in everything. As soon as Stanley Tucci walks on, I feel like everything's going to be okay. This was actually apparently the main reason why he took this role. It's because he wanted to do a part where he got to do a German accent. Really? Yeah. Well done, Stanley Tucci. Indeed. When Thomas and I watched this movie 
one of the more recent-ish times that I also exclaimed that, whoa, Tommy Lee Jones is in this. I remember when Stanley Tucci was in it that time. I was like, Stanley Tucci's in this? And Thomas was like, yeah. I'm like, why is he in the other Marvel? Oh, he dies, doesn't he? And Thomas was like, yeah. <laughs> I wrote down as soon as Stanley Tucci walked on, I'm like, they better not make this character evil. Right. Or I'm going to flip my lid. Yeah. And they didn't, but oh. they did... They went the other route. They made him take the Uncle Ben fall, and <gasps> I'm ben. so sad about it. Yeah. It's like, how dare you make me watch Sailor Tucci die with my But that's also eyes. another part of the whole Captain America thing, mm-hmm. though, is that Captain Steve is the only person that the, the, super, ser- the super soldier serum has ever worked on, mm-hmm. because right after he did his procedure, doc- the Dr. Erkstein mm-hmm. dies, mm-hmm. and he apparently took, like, intentionally bad notes on his procedure and no one was ever able to re- replicate it. Uh, that's so, in the comics? Yeah. Okay. So Steve is the only super soldier ever. Huh. Okay. Because of that. Cool. Or and is then, he? Well, because other people have tried to replicate it and that's how we get some villains is the, the use the super soldier serum incorrectly. Right. Can we talk about um, the world exposition? Do you guys have anything before that? You mean the world expo? Expo? Yeah. Is expo, exposition, not the same word? Yeah. Is it? I guess it is. Yeah. yeah. Mansplain me. I, it just seemed like it, it would, it, it didn't. It seemed I'm like sorry. you were lining up an exposition. Go- yeah, it seemed oh, like you were, oh, it seemed like you were going sorry. into an exposition And I was like, did they scene. put an exposition You're right. In You're right. You're yeah. right. Usually okay. when we talk about expositions, yeah. we are talking about ghosts um, <laughs> and other expositions. I thought that scene and looked basils. really cool, visually. <laughs> uh, very erupt. You'll understand this when we go in a couple of weeks. It's very Tomorrowland yeah. at Disney World for sure. It feels very Disney, mm-hmm. Disney World. Um, I when they show Stark showing the floating car and it like goes up and then it yeah. falls down, I went <laughs> insert Tesla truck joke here. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas was like, "Shut up!" Right. Yeah, the cyber truck. Oh, I still want one though. Ugh, they're so. Oh, oh, what? I just realized that Elon Musk probably thinks of himself as a Stark. Probably type, does. Doesn't he? I don't know. I wonder, Thomas I wonder like, if he I always know. wanted Honest. to be like well, Stark. I bet he may not, but Thomas thinks that he's <laughs> Honestly, based on what I have observed of Elon Musk, he seems like a pretty down to earth dude. Mm. So then we get some Bucky cap banter which is really cute i think that their friendship is really cute very it is right like they're, yeah they're good pal guy I mean, you i like seeing a bromance that isn't just a oh i'm gonna punch you in the shoulder yeah. we're uncomfortable yeah, yeah. with being guys together it blah, was a blah, healthy blah. masculine it was relationship. very healthy masculine and it's yeah. refreshing to see i will say though that again because of the way the future movies have played up these characters mm-hmm. and like there since I hadn't seen this movie, I'm like, okay, there's some serious backstory that right. has already been established. Right. Or else I would give more of a crap. Right. And so coming back and watching this, I, I again I expected a lot more development from Bucky, and yeah. there really nope, wasn't. Just and, so. and she, Peggy, is the other one that I was like, I expected her to be, like, really involved. And, she, I mean, her character was great, but it was also just, like, I don't know, not as much as I expected. Right. Especially with her having a spinoff and stuff like that. Right. So I will say that um, I didn't realize that Bucky – was Bucky until the lead up to the Winter Soldier. Really? When everyone was like, Bucky comes back. So I'm they... like, wait, we had Bucky? <laughs> <laughs> Who was Bucky? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just because I hadn't seen this one in a while before that one came well, out. Well, but... it, was, it was funny because I felt like – I felt like I actually got more of Bucky's backstory from the Winter Soldier movie than yeah. I did from this one. Yeah. That was the one where he was like, yeah, we were childhood friends and he helped me like out of a bunch of scrapes and he was the one who took care of me and like yeah. is, looked after me when my mom died, I think is something that, yeah. Is Winter Soldier the one where we find out that, spoiler alert, Bucky kills um, Iron Man's parents? No, that's Civil War. Oh, that's mm-hmm. a good movie. Yes. 
I can't wait to do all the other wow. Marvel movies. I can't wait to talk about Civil War. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we have very different opinions yeah, of that like movie. Two years, in like two years, we'll be able to talk about it. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. Last night when we were watching this, I was like, oh. And then when we talk about Endgame, Thomas goes, yeah, in like four years. <laughs> that is the downside of being bi-weekly. Right? <laughs> it is the downside of the, <laughs> we pim- could the go Pimsman. Back to, you guys, we could go back to weekly. It all depends on you listeners. Uh, right. That was it for me on yeah Bucky Bucky, on Bucky. that really yeah. that was it for you on Bucky I mean I have I have more Bucky thoughts as Bucky comes on I feel like you could have a lot more on Bucky oh I could get <laughs> all on Bucky <laughs> yeah um my next question was when so you know Steve gets and Stanley Tucci agree or he brings them and he's like oh, come and be a soldier blah 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 mm-hmm. I really like this whole. I like this whole section of the movie where he's in basic training. Oh, he's training. Yeah. yeah. I love his whole, mm-hmm. I love the whole, yeah. and you see like how much heart he has. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you see the heart stuff before him. He's like, I, I don't like a bully mm-hmm. no matter where he's from and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And that was one of the first times. I love him. Yeah. This is also um, when, when Peggy comes in. Well, this was, yeah, I was yeah. going to lead up to Peggy. And then. the way you guys feel about Sebastian Stan and Bucky, That's how I feel, feel about, about Peggy. Peggy. Dude, I feel that way about Peggy. Because she She's is. Hot. Whew. Yeah. The, I didn't even, I didn't know who this actress was oh, yeah? until I saw this movie. I was like, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's a babe. Yeah. She's got. The 40 style does wonders yeah, for her. Yeah, she does a really, they did a really good job casting mm-hmm. for a 40 style. Because not every woman, in my opinion, looks good in that older, I call it old Hollywood. Right. what 40s is mm-hmm. to me. I really enjoy how we're introduced to Peggy. When she just punches a guy in the face. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah. that as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I here's the thing. I really like uh, her character. I found what I found distracting was how every time she did something hot, all the guys nearby had to stop and take a twenty second yeah jaw drop moment yeah every time, and we had to get a. Wow, what a woman. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I get it. I also just watched what just happened. Right. <laughs> I'm also oh. very turned on right now. I don't need you to tell me to be turned on. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. That was what I found distracting about. And so it wasn't anything to do with her. It was just like the the writing of them it. like shoveling it down your throat. Like, yeah, yeah uh-huh. see, she's a really advanced, like progressive woman for a time. Do you get it? <laughs> like, I, yeah, I get it. I asked Thomas during the movie. If there were women in World War II who were at that level in mm-hmm. general, like, were there women? But I know she was technically also not in the so Army. So she's not she's, in the Army. She yeah. was in the SSR. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what that acronym stands for. But it's basically the precursor to S.H.I.E.L.D. Right. So she was technically a civilian. Mm-hmm. But I did a little bit of research. And there was actually some groups of women. They didn't, like, fight front line right. in World War II, but there are some units that were all female mm-hmm. that I think were like second line, like will come in after like the main really push. Yeah. I think huh. I think women did a lot of There like, weren't a lot of them, but there were some. I think they did a lot of um like undercover like infiltration I could stuff see that. too. That's cool. Yeah. Women are boss. For the most part for the most part they got stuck in the hospitals and stuff. Yeah, I, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we're good for. Yeah. Mostly. That's all I would have been good for. Right. Yeah, that's true. I would choose the hospital, please. No, I'm good. (laughs) That's that's fair. I would choose the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, but then we get the training montage and everything. That I I really enjoy the the training part. When he likes, when he likes, what they do, the flag. The flag thing is the best. As soon as the flag thing (laughs) came up, I looked at my mom and I was like, are we going to Mulan this shit right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't even know. When, it, right. when this scene came up, I go, I love this part. I love this part to Thomas. And she was like, I think so? Because mom has seen it before. Oh, okay. But I have not. And so she was like, I think, yeah, I think. She's like, I guess I don't really know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> mom, we're going to watch Mulan in a couple weeks. She's very excited. Yeah. And then when he ended up doing what he did, I I really greatly appreciated that. I was like, <laughs> That speaks to me on a very I, I deep like, level. I like that not only does he knock over the flagpole, take the mm-hmm. flag, but I like that he doesn't even do, like, I get a ride now, right? Like, yeah, he just, he like, just hands it. He's like, yeah. I'll be getting in the car now. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Work smarter, not harder. You said harder. the thing. You said the thing. Now I'm doing the thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's my boy. Yeah. You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> I also really like the part where they're doing jumping jacks, and then Tommy Lee Jones is talking about how he doesn't want to use Steve as the candidate. He wanted to use yeah. the other guy. And then he throw he get, he grabs the the dummy grenade and throws it in the middle, mm-hmm. and Steve jumps on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically proving him wrong. Yeah, right. and then Tommy Lee Jones is like, he's still skinny, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then we get the the scene in the dorm with uh, Steve and Doctor Erskine, the which schnapps. I really like. The, the schnapps I love scene. That scene. It's a really good scene. Like it basically <sighs> is like the reason you're getting chosen to do this is because you're just a good dude. Right. Yeah. And the way the serum works is it takes what you are and makes it more. Yeah. So if you're good, it makes you better. If it's, if you're bad, it makes you worse. Yeah. And oh. like because Steve is such me, a good oh, dude, oh, he's right. just going to be a better dude. It makes me love you know. Steve. And I love seeing good people get rewarded for yes. being good. Yeah. And also Stanley Tucci it just makes me want to – I just want to cuddle Stanley Tucci yes. and yes. have him tell me that everything is <laughs> going to be okay. Yes. Because he's I'm just have like him tell I, you how much of a good boy you are. Yeah, he's just <laughs> he just seems like such a nice guy, like so comforting and like he's he's just very much like I see you. Yeah, and like <laughs> you still you to you so much. <laughs> Be my dad. <laughs> yeah. What's his character's name? Tucci's. Uh, Doctor Erskine, Abraham Erskine, I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Keep going. I assume is a reference to. Uh, it seems like a we- as a slight reference to um, Albert Einstein. Mm, but, mm, probably. But before the procedure, we go to back to um, Red Skull, and he's getting his portrait taken. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god. yeah, 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 yeah! I have something. I have something. I have something. I have something. So, the guy who's painting him. Yeah. <laughs> That's the greatest facial expression. <laughs> I relate to this time. guy so yes. hard when the guy's like, what do you think? And like he's like rolling his eyes, like making the face of like, really? Mm-hmm. Like. <sighs> I just thought that this guy has the expression on his face and was like, this guy's going to fucking kill me. Yes. This guy's yeah. going to kill he's me. He's like, I'm painting an actual <laughs> demon and <laughs> when I'm done, I'm I'm going to die. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's great. Um. Yeah, it was very good. I yeah. really appreciated that. Um, so I have a question about – so we go to the car next, right? This is the car scene? Yes. Oh, we're, we're, on driving, the, we're, we're on the driving ride to the, to procedure. the yes. Yeah. So he like kind of talks about his background a little bit and how yeah. he used to get beat up a lot and this and that. So how come, how come he didn't ever – this sounds really – but how come he never tried to bulk up in general? Like, why didn't he try to get His to be? Health. Oh, yeah, I guess yeah. that's true. Okay, he was generally on. He like Which has, they didn't he like has asthma and other stuff that he didn't. really. You get that moment yeah. where you see the list of health concerns, right. like at the very beginning yeah. of the right. movie. But they definitely didn't like. I don't feel like you see. They it, didn't though. really like. Yeah, I, I thought there are like, there are people who just have trouble putting on muscle. That's mm-hmm. true. Like, there are just small people who have trouble putting on weight. Mm-hmm. Right. So. I have yeah. a question. Yes. yes. In regards to the... What's the what's the right word here? Mm. Would it be better <laughs> to just have a building where we have this facility in that's just a building that just has this facility... Or is doing what they did and kingsmaning that crap. <laughs> <laughs> is that more necessary? Realistic? Yeah, better. Right. Is that like more? I mean, it's very shield. <laughs> so I guess shield. I just is think very they wanted an excuse. Yeah. I think they just wanted the excuse to be like super a, cool and undercover yeah, very like undercover. I I like I liked the completely unnecessary password. Yeah. Cuz it's <laughs> not like she doesn't know who these people right. are. Come on. Right. Also, I like how all this subterfuge ultimately does useless. nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cuz somebody infiltrates yeah. it super duper easily. Yeah, off screen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so dumb, but I loved it. <laughs> uh, yep, 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 yep. So yeah, we get yeah. the uh, the procedure where we meet my boyfriend number three or four, if we're including Chris Evans, and we are. Um, 
Why wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, it's just a given. Uh, Richard Armitage. Yeah. His boyfriend number four. Yeah. Yep. Who? Richard Armitage. He's the bad guy spy dude. He is that, the sh- bad that guy shoots the doctor. He's the oh. bad guy spy dude. So going into this scene mm-hmm. when Peggy and him like look over at everything. I don't know if you guys know it, but I do. But like Peggy looks at Steve after he says something that's sweet and Captain America E. And she like looks at him in this way that in my head she's saying like I already want to bone you, mm-hmm. and you're about to get way hotter. Yeah. <laughs> and I cannot wait to climb you like a tree. Yeah. And that's what I read Peggy as in this scene. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. that's all. I would agree There's with that. There's another scene in a few minutes that is very similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. And yeah. then we have the procedure, which has yeah. so many levers and knobs yes. and, and magic wheels pants. And, <laughs> and what? Yeah, take and off your shirt pants. and your tie and everything except yeah. your pants. Don't but worry about that. But leave on your pants and that belt, which are definitely not going to fit you anymore <laughs> after don't. you now grow four sizes. Right. <laughs> His was pants like... don't. His pants don't fit him when he gets out. They're a little short, but I'm pretty sure that if the actual if he was wearing uh, the actual pants that he was wearing when yeah. he went in, they would just be shredded. Speaking of things we should all be wearing, why isn't everybody wearing protective eyewear in this? Yeah, scene? Dr. Erskine. <laughs> like everyone, Dr. Erskine's the only one who's not. Yeah, he's actually. the only one who's not wearing goggles. The people goggles. up in the uh, the booth aren't either, though. Like Peggy and all of them, everybody's like covering no, their they're not. Like this. But the the lab techs down on the floor yes. have like the big goggles, yeah. and Stark's got his his cool his future tech glass. Yeah. <laughs> right. His douche sunglasses. <laughs> I really yeah. liked, despite all that, when stuff starts going wrong, Dr. Erskine, who does not have the protective eyewear, runs right up to the window <laughs> in the thing and looks directly inside. <laughs> He's about to, to die. check on Steve. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> and, he and shows he no discomfort. He doesn't whatsoever. need eyes. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't no. He's about to get <laughs> shot anyway. Yeah. He doesn't need eyes. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the reveal. My dad. Yeah. The re- yeah. The yeah. reveal. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Chris. Chris. I want to say Chris Absworth, <laughs> but it's not Chris That's Hemsworth. That's the other Chris. Yeah. yeah. This is the wrong Chris. Yeah. But then we get the reveal, and then we get the other the other part with Peggy. When she sees him without a shirt on, mm-hmm. she walks up to him and she's like, "Yeah, she's like, I want to touch no. the man boobs, but I can't. <laughs> it's not professional. It's not professional. Ah. That was actually that was actually uh that was actually like a break. Yeah, the scene that they just kept in the movie. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> because she was legitimately impressed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. If you guys ever get a chance, there's on the um, My Dad Wrote a Porno podcast, Haley Atwell does mm-hmm. uh, like a special mini sode with them because oh she listens to the podcast. What podcast? My Dad Wrote a Porno. Oh, okay. And she's quite charming. It's a very good interview. Uh, it's very fun. She sings a song that she wrote in middle school. <laughs> about a boy and it's pretty great (laughs) (laughs) we'll have to listen to that so why was there just one vial left in this uh super serum soldier so that the bad guy could steal it like why (laughs) yes why was there one vial left over (laughs) why did they bring one extra vial why would they have an extra vial i don't know well you never know What's going to happen? And if you don't have the extra vial and you need it, then you're going to feel like a real dengus. But if yeah. you, you know, if it's you bring the have extra it and not vial, need it, then need it and not exactly. have it. Exactly. It's true. Yeah. And then the chase scene ensues. The chase scene yeah. ensues. My boyfriend shoots my other boyfriend. Yeah, and that's it's sad. sad. <laughs> that is sad. That is sad. I love how I love him like pointing to his heart like before yeah. he dies. Yeah. Like, that's all we need. That's all we need. I'm like, yeah, that was yeah. very sad. And then we see Chris Evans' face. I'm like, get him. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it's we get on. to see him getting used to his new abilities, yeah. which I really enjoy. I also yeah. love yeah. him crashing into yeah. the wedding routine yeah. Yeah. so bad. Sorry. He's just yep. like shouting sorry behind him wherever he goes. I like the 
So the little kid. So has Thomas yes. ever told you how watching movies when kids are in peril now that we have kids? Thomas and I are like, oh, I don't like what it feels like when kids get taken mm. in. I mean, I didn't like it before, but like now that I have kids, I'm like, oh, it hurts in a whole different way. And I start feeling icky when he like takes the kid, but when he throws him in the water, I was like, oh my god! And then when he's like, I can swim. Go get it. Yeah, I like that kid. Yeah. I love that moment because yeah. because usually. The- it's like the superhero thing to do to to just jump in, like regardless. Yeah. Too. And and it's such a like superhero movie cliche for the kid to not be able to swim and to yeah. need help, and that's how the guy gets away or yeah, whatever. I enjoyed that. And so it was kind of a nice little twist, and I laughed very hard. It was like a surprise <laughs> laugh. Yeah. Too. It was like yeah. ah, right. nice. <laughs> I love this kid. <laughs> and the bad guy yeah. gets into like. A uh, Batmobile. Sort it is of. a very, very Tim Burton Batmobile, or more like a Joe Schumacher Batmobile kind no, of submarine. No, it looks like but... the one in Batman Returns that has like the retractable <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. top thing, and he gets underwater. I like that Cap can just like this is his abilities are just insane. He's just... <laughs> and they're actually in this movie compared to the other Captain America movies are pretty tame. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say in this movie, almost strength wise. He, they don't play him up as much as they do in the other films. But like, yeah, jumpy wise, he's yeah, he very does, jumpy. He's very jumpy. He's, he's very a jumpy. very jumpy little yeah. guy in this That's one. True. And yeah. I don't feel like he's as jumpy in the other movies. No, he's not like as he's not as mobile in the other. <laughs> They're ones. like, like, all right, we need to rewrite Cap. We need to make him a little more punchy, a little bit more less frog like, a little less frog, <laughs> a little bit more poof. Yes, that sounds perfect. Then we get our musical number, <laughs> montage number two. Yes. Um, if I could be any person in this movie, it's one of these dancing girls. Yeah. Yes. Obviously. And this I w- was very like um, Miss Maisel. Right. To me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, so because you hadn't seen this yet, when we watched season three of Maisel together mm-hmm. apart this year. Yes. When you were like, oh, I love the first dance number. And I was like, I don't like the costumes at all. It's because I wanted the costumes to be what the costumes were in this so bad. That's I was fair. like, it's not anywhere cool as Captain America. And it's mm-hmm. yeah. the only time I could say anything negative about Maisel and their costumes, honestly. Yeah. But that's yeah. all. Yeah. So this is, as far as I can recall... The only superhero movie that has a musical number in it, as far as I know. I think you might be right about that. And I don't hate it. Oh, I don't hate it either. I think I it's really adorable. enjoy it. Oh, I think it works. Yeah. It does. It serves its purpose for the scene. It fits and... in with the movie. It fits in with the story. It fits in like, with the, the war time bonds, period. War, war bonds that this whole thing was a thing back in World War II. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember learning no. something about that in history. Don't remember right now, but that does sound familiar. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, the government was asking the general citizenry for money so they could pay for Their war. the war. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. it was by I like the I like the progression of it. Mm-hmm. How it goes from him just like reading the lines off of his shield, and then at the end he's just holding up a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> with with girls. Yeah, I like on it. I like yeah. that he gets more into it, but also. Um, I don't know. It was funny because like as I watched him get more into it, I was getting more disappointed. I'm like, you're not. You're not doing. This is not your destiny. You're not doing you. Yeah. This is not your destiny. Yeah. Yeah, Then he gets to the. Then he gets to the actual Mm -hmm. war, and he realizes that he's not that great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So he's there for a USO show. Yeah. Was he there doing like the same spiel that he does for like the war bond advertisements? I don't. Because that would he been wouldn't have been sucky. he wouldn't have been selling war bonds. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was probably just because he. Just I think he like had become somewhat something. famous yeah. doing his war bond thing that they just brought a version of it mm. on tour for the USA. Yeah. Because as you, if you saw in the movie, they had Captain America comics, right? Which they would have had to get, the soldiers would have been able to get, right? And that actually, that comic was actually a modified version of the actual first cute Captain America comic. That's very so. cool. Yeah. God, that costume was bad. It was real bad. So bad. So bad. Real bad. So bad. Yeah. It's a really uncomfortable body stocking. Yeah. The- like a weird neck thing. I hated that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really would like to see progressive photos of Cap's costumes, like, for all of the Avenger movies. Like, all I'm sure of it's the- online somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Because I, I love seeing – I. It's so bad, but I really like seeing where we started. I know this is when wasn't his actual costume. Like they were purposely trying to make right. it hokey. But even yeah. when um, Stark gives him his first mm-hmm. one, 
even that one comparatively to like what he ends up with with bearded Evans. Or what it was actually one of the complaints about this movie when it came out is that his actual costume looked too much like a snowmobile outfit. Oh, really? A yeah. snowmobile outfit? Yeah. What's a like snowmobile? Like a snowsuit. People thought it looked too much like a snowsuit. Oh, weird. I don't think yeah. I would give it a snowsuit, but it I definitely thought it looked doesn't fine. look like... I thought it was fine. Yeah. I thought I remember reading that because he had like a mask and stuff in this movie that people didn't like Captain America's face being like they didn't like that part of the costume. I feel like I read something like that there one time. Maybe oh, not. I don't remember that. So then we go on the rescue mission. There is a quick moment right before that where um, Steve is like drawing in his little notebook. Yeah. And I think he's left handed, but you sold me. on Anyway. Uh, so he is actually... In the in his comic origins, mm-hmm. he so before he becomes Captain America and he's just Steve Rogers, mm-hmm. his he is a um, artist. Oh, cool! And that's kind of a throwback. Nice to that. Mm-hmm. That's that's one of the more subtle Easter eggs. Cute. So yeah, yes, the so rescue mission. I have a story to tell you about this part of the movie when they're up in the airplane. Okay. Yeah. So. I was face painting a small child once, like Captain America. Mm -hmm. And you know small children, they like to give us facts when we face paint Mm -hmm. them, like superheroes and such. And he goes, Captain America can fly. Do you remember the story or not? Oh, yeah. He goes, Captain America can fly. And I go, no, he can't. (laughs) And the kid's like, yeah, he can. And I go, when does Captain America fly? He goes, when he jumps out of an airplane with his backpack on. And I'm like... (laughs) (laughs) All right, kid. So when this scene happened in the movie last night, I looked at Thomas. I go, Captain America can fly. <laughs> so thanks, small Kids child. Are brats. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, then we get to see Captain America being real good at stealth missions. I was just going to say, so let's talk about the subtlety of having a giant American flag on your back. <laughs> right? Like, he jumped into the back of the truck with, with the two... Hydra agents in the back. My thought was, one of those guys is going to come flying out the back without a uniform on. Right? No. (laughs) Yeah. I also. Steve Rogers doubled down and went with the (laughs) big, bright, red, white, and blue. Steve Rogers don't need no disguise because he is Captain America. (laughs) There were so many times where he was like, he was like creeping around behind the cars and stuff. Yeah. And he never once like checked behind him. And I'm like. Thank God these guys are oblivious because if they just glanced your way, they'd see that big freaking shield on your back. Even later in the movie when he goes up like on the ship and he like sneaks into like the control room and he's just like walks in and just like slowly walks down the stairs and I'm like, dude. (laughs) Right. Yeah. He's not good at stealth missions. Also, you're 500 pounds of muscle right now. You don't walk (laughs) that quietly. (laughs) Relax, bud. Yeah. 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 And this is when I was wondering, so I know that we didn't see it on, he, we didn't see him on the cameras yet, but this was the first time that I was wondering, Captain America had obviously made newspapers, people knew mm-hmm. who he was. Schmidt didn't seem to know who he was or, you know, know anything about him until he saw him on the camera. Like, how come at this point he hadn't been trying to get Captain America? Do you know what I mean? Like, why wasn't he like, oh, this, cause he said earlier in the movie that if the super soldier serum worked, that well, they would I think because he wasn't a threat up until that point. He hadn't done I mean, anything. He was in America selling war bonds. I guess that's true. Okay, 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 okay. Also, he probably figured he'd take him out when he released right. that missile on New yeah. York. So. Right. Yeah. So, um, did we have cameras for surveillance back no. in the World War II like that? No. Um, when when he's like switching views and stuff, I looked at Thomas. I go, uh, Yeah. Did we have cameras? Like yeah, that? they set up a ring uh, <laughs> system, and yeah. The ring system. <laughs> yeah. And they controlled yeah. the heat with the nest. Exactly. Yeah. They spoke to their Google home. Yeah. He was like, okay, Google, take out Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> and Google will respond, you know, be like, I cannot do that. <laughs> so yeah. then he finds Bucky. Yeah. And we find all the prisoners. Yeah. And then he tells everyone that he's Captain America. And then the British guy is like, who the heck is Captain America? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, British guy's boyfriend number five. Oh. Is that is that, that is the guy? No, no, guy? no, 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 no. no. That's boyfriend number six. (laughs) (laughs) Boyfriend number five is knockoff Tom Hiddleston. Oh, okay. The the actual British guy, the like the the handsome but smarmy Brit. Right. He uh, that's J.J. Field. He was in 
I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's on Netflix. It's a show called Turn. Mm -mm. It's an AMC. It's about the um, American. Wow. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. You know, the war that we fought with Britain to gain our independence. The revolutionary one? That's the one. (laughs) 1776. Wow. What were you going to call it? The American I think war? that was the problem. She didn't remember what oh. it was called. <laughs> you know that war? You know Hamilton? You know that show? <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, it's a show about that. And he plays a, a British uh, like intelligence officer. And he's very, very threatening, but mm. very handsome and very knockoff Tom Hiddleston. Okay, okay. So that's Boyfriend 5. Boyfriend 6 is... Big old mustache, mustache American. What are these called when you have mutton chops? Mutton chops, yeah. yeah. Um, and he is something Mc- Neil Mc- McDonough. Yeah, and I and I know him because I listen to the Paul Blart podcast every <laughs> Thanksgiving that the McElroy brothers do, uh-huh. and Neil McDonough plays the villain in Paul Blart too. Uh-huh. He's also he's in a lot. He's in of a lot war of things. stuff. Like, particularly, like, war stuff. Oh, yeah? Like he's in Band of Brothers. Okay. He's in an episode of JAG. Neil McDonough is somebody who's in, he's one of those people who's in everything, and you like, I know that yeah. face, but I can't think of that name. Yeah. That's him. He has a very distinct face, He's too. basically, he's very albino looking. He's, he's very, a, he has a, he has a very, he's very white, he's and he white has blonde. very vivid blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then uh, Captain oh. releases all the prisoners. When so when he gets to all of them and we see all of them really quick, it's funny because I don't remember this movie a super ton, but I saw all of them and it was weird. The shot made it seem like these guys are going to be important. You know, like when you see an extra yes. in the movie, or like they have like the important shot, right? And I was like, why are these guys? Why are these guys getting like this special shot? These are just a bunch of nobody prisoners mm-hmm. that he's releasing. And then like later when they show him in the bar, I'm like, oh yeah, because they go back. Oh, okay, I remember. I was, like, I was glad that they gave them a little yeah. more screen time because yeah. they were all very. Mm-hmm. Very yeah. good actors, and I was like, so these guys, use them. So these guys all make up a group called the Howlers. Okay. From the comics, and they also – it comes up in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show also. Oh, cool. Not these guys, but – Right. There was a character on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. whose dad was a Howler. Okay. Um, But these guys are a group that was at one point worked with Cap, and then after he was frozen, they right. like worked in like his honor. I really enjoy – so when he gets the Bucky – I really like Bucky and his banter back and oh, forth. Yeah. When he's like, is this permanent? Mm-hmm. He's like, so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cute. It is. And also, I didn't count, but Steve is boyfriend number seven. Well, yeah. I forgot to count him earlier. Okay. Or, yeah. Sebastian. Sebastian Stan. That's, that's where I'm at. Right. So, then the battle montage happens. Yeah. This Well, the uh, the escape scene from... Um, oh, yeah. The escape scene. Yeah, from the escape. This, that the escape is, that, 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 that. is one the of the few action scenes that does not get turned into a montage. So. Yes. Yeah. But it is a cool... It is a good scene. I enjoy it's watching really cool the scene. other guys fighting their way out yeah. with all yeah. the, like, tanks and weaponry and stuff. Yeah. And being like, this is cool. Yeah. This is cool. This is cool. Yeah. 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 How come they don't use these weapons against Hydra... When they come back and start to fight Hydra stuff, like he, they took all the, they show up with all of these guns on them, like they're like, yeah, we got all these weapons. Yeah. Why aren't they using them when they go back into the montage they, later? The only thing I can think is that they were all sent back to a lab for analysis, like to see true. if they could reverse engineer. Them. Uh, I guess so, but mm. I don't know. I feel like I would have kept a few, right? right. Plot holes, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then we get to see. We also get to see Red Skull's ridiculous car. As they're escaping. Yeah. Super ridiculous. Six wheel. Ridiculous car. Yeah, why? Yeah. <laughs> because it's a Hydra. Cut off one tire and two more grow back in place. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we get back to the uh, the um, headquarters and everyone is all like, oh, Steve Rogers, you did such a good job. And then we get thirsty and thirsty Natalie Dormer. Uh, that's boyfriend number eight. <laughs> Natalie Dormer is my woman crush. I Dude. love her so much. And can I just say they wasted her in this movie? They super waste her in this movie. 
She right? wasn't a thing yet. I don't think this was bef- this was pre Game of Thrones. Oh, so yeah, look at her sure. face. Oh. You know she's gonna be a thing. Yeah. Right. The this is somebody you don't just throw away on yes. a dumb. Role. She was just thirsty girl number two. Right. Yeah, so. she sure was. <laughs> right before she's thirsty, I had said to Thomas because there's something that Peggy says to Captain about. I don't remember. I go, ooh, Peggy's thirsty for mm-hmm. her cap. Uh-huh. And he goes, not as thirsty as Natalie Dormer's mouth. And I was like, what? And then she walked and I was like, I forgot she in this. Yeah. And I was like, Natalie Dormer. <laughs> she's God, she's beautiful. God dang, she's beautiful. Also, my favorite character from Game of Thrones. Yeah. She was my favorite. Mm. Marjorie. R.I.P. R.I.P. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> then we get the battle montage. Right? The big battle montage, right? Because we get Captain's vibranium action shots. We get his yeah, shield. He gets his shield and mm-hmm. he figures out what fondue is. Yeah. He's just a sweet, sweet, naive boy. Yeah. <laughs> sweet, Thinks sweet that boy. fondue was a sex reference, yeah. apparently. <laughs> so I think while I enjoy the fact that it is battle montage and we don't have to see all of it and we get to, I, I like how they filmed it in general. Some of it is a little rough, a little. A it's a little dated rough, in some parts. A little dated, and yeah. some of it I was like, woof. Yeah. I do like how a couple of them kind of look like comic book panels. I like that yes, too, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but some of the CG is a little dated on it. It is. Yeah. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. I actually, I liked, like I said earlier, I kind of liked getting some of the action presented in this way. Cause yeah. The highlights. You, yeah, yeah, you get the highlight reel, and then yeah. you get to move on with the story mm-hmm. rather yeah. than... Time is passing. Okay, Rather we're going. Right? Watching yeah. Ray and Kylo Ren fight for 20 minutes on them. Such Fair. a long fight. Super long. What happens after the montage? Montage. We get the, we get the, you are failing <laughs> meme. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's one of my favorite memes. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! We yeah. have very different meme tastes. <laughs> you say that's I, meme, and I'm going. I didn't know that was a meme, like, right? Yeah, meme. Okay. exactly. Things are heating up in the Marvel. Yeah. Then we have, yeah. Then we have the train heist. Yes. Yeah. The train heist is cool. The train mm-hmm. heist. Yeah, this was the moment where I was like, I feel like I should be a lot sadder about Bucky's death. They really graze not. over yeah. him dying. I feel like it's really quick yeah. and. We don't like take a moment mm-hmm. or like. Are you just? Are you not sad because you know he comes back because you've seen the next movies? I mean, that's also possible, but no, no, I don't think so. Because it didn't. It also, it didn't hit me like when I watched the movie when it came out. It didn't hit me as that being important. So. It was. It was almost like. So what leads up to it is that like, Captain. Kind of gets like knocked, not even like knocked out or anything. He's just like brought down to his knees by something. He's still like fully capable of doing things. Yeah. And then somebody comes at them and Bucky grabs the shield and he uses it to block something. And it's like, I don't know. It just kind of seemed like. Also, given the properties of the shield. Right. It shouldn't have done that. It shouldn't have done that. Yeah, this isn't like Thor's hammer. Like, the right. shield doesn't just work for those who are worthy. Right. It's a shield. It's uh, That's just how vibranium works. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just all seemed... it The death itself. Like, yeah. him doing that and then the whole, like, him losing his balance and, like, getting thrown off the train that all seemed so contrived to me and like yeah, completely i could see that it seemed out of character like i didn't feel like like bucky would have done that i mean i guess gut reaction maybe he's still in like protect steve mode but i feel like he would have tossed him the shield and or yeah or done something toss smarter. a shield to your captain D- or yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Wow. Or done something smarter, like <laughs> like make sure you're not directly in line of the train door. Yeah, or something. I, yeah, it just it just seemed weird, and it mm-hmm. and the timing was weird. It all moved very quickly. Yeah, that just felt weird to me, and I was not as sad about losing him as I probably should have been. Yeah, I also was not when I saw it the first mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't even know that that was Bucky until <laughs> I forgot Bucky? that that was Bucky. Yeah, um, yeah. Hottie McHotter pants. Come right. on, get with it. 
And, and then, then we, we get have, sad Steve for a little we bit. We get sad Steve. We for get a bit. sad Steve, and then we get um, can't get drunk. Stan, or then we get not Stanley Tucci. Then we get Tommy Lee Jones telling him to eat a steak, and then be like, "Nah, I'm gonna eat your steak." Oh, oh he's oh, interviewing yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the doctor, Zola. Doctor yeah. Zola. Another character who I thought was gonna be much more villainous after the whole winter soldier thing him his entity being trapped in a computer and he yeah. and everybody was like oh, this guy and they were all like we're doomed <laughs> i was like oh wow he must have been a big deal yeah I didn't, I didn't realize he was just like some little weasel guy <laughs> yeah great that's it they loved it all <laughs> <laughs> it all made so much more sense yeah the villains are not the strong the suit of the Marvel the movies. Suit, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And then we do the tra- the plane heist. Yeah, we go from trains the... to planes. Yes. Well, he starts out with a uh, motorcycle thing. That's. I feel like it has very. It. Whenever I see it, it gives me um, the speeder bikes from. Return of the Jedi vibes. You know what? I that might be it. Because when I watched it, I was like, "Have I seen this scene before?" I was like, "This feels very nostalgic." This is when I asked you who does the music because the music sounds very Star Wars. Each does it? Yes, that's why. And so that's funny that you guys Hmm. say that. I was wondering why I was feeling Star Warsy during this scene too. (laughs) Yeah, so that's funny. Also, that motorcycle, motorcycle OP. Please nerf. (laughs) (laughs) What? That's a very, very strong motorcycle. Oh. It can do lots of things. <laughs> well, did you see all the button capabilities that it had? Of course it can. Okay. That's a little ridiculous. Make me a cappuccino. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Get a cap. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> wow. You should wow. name You're welcome. on um on the fourth of July at Bigby, you uh-huh. should make the like the latte of the day be a cap. A chino uh, or something like that. And like draw a cap draw Do an ice cap? Uh, uh, that's oh my God. a Tim Hortons branded thing. <laughs> I can't do that lately. Do a frozen cap. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Regardless, draw the shield. I will. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> I miss that. I think we coming up with mm-hmm. latte names. Okay. Yeah. So now yeah. we have the train heist. Plane heist. The plane, plane heist. heist. Plane heist. Yes. We get in a super speedy car with Tommy Lee Jones. The ridiculous car that apparently is very fast. And Tommy mm-hmm. Lee Jones doesn't want to kiss Cap. Goodbye. No. That was funny. But he does get to kiss Peggy. So Yeah. The, I would kiss Peggy. The I don't yeah. want to kiss you line that was, I've told you before that mom doesn't like subtitles, mm-hmm. right? Oh, did it come up? And I've been forcing her to watch. I'm like, look. I need this for homework purposes, so you're going to suck it up, and I'm going to watch it with subtitles. And she was like, ha, 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 I didn't catch that line the first time. Okay, subtitles are all right sometimes. Ha, <laughs> 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 ha, mom. Ha, ha. So I win. Okay. <laughs> so we get on the plane. Yes. Mm-hmm. We get on the plane, and then they launch their little, like, itsy-bitsy airplanes, like, almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, weird. Shouldn't you wait right? until you're closer? Are they well, missiles? Are they like yeah. missile airplanes? Are they gonna be like, They're like are they bombs, like, apparently? Right. So yeah. are they like suicide like kamikaze situations? Is that Again, what's happening right now? Let's just this whole ending fight is very anticlimactic. Yes, yes, it <laughs> yeah. is. It's not very <laughs> memorable. Um it's very odd. It's just mm-hmm. odd. This whole this whole end, I have a lot of issues with the ending in general and the way that it all goes down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it goes down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can spoilers. do it too, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was an ice pun. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did all the ice puns in Frozen. Can't just do them again. Yes, I can. You I wait can till Winter it. Soldier. <laughs> so all these little planes are dumb and yep. they launch them really quickly. Yep. And I do like that when he gets the one out and then the hole and he just starts throwing them out the hole Mm -hmm. of the one is really funny to me. What? When like the one plane, he gets the one plane to like fall out of the plane, which leaves a hole. And he just starts chucking dudes out the hole. hole. Yeah. And then when he gets on the plane and the plane like tips up and the guy like falls into the propeller, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that part made me feel a little yucky. Yeah. That was yucky. Um, and then we have the anticlimactic fight scene 
And apparently yeah. just goes and has the stole yeah. stone now. He just goes to Vermeer. He's just yeah. like, goodbye, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we goodbye. Um, exactly. Right? And then so I have some questions now at the end here. Why would uh-huh. you have questions? Why does the plane have to crash? Like, why is he like, it has to crash now? So I thought... Because during the fight, they do at one point crash into the controls of the plane. And then when they go into the dive, yeah. and then Red Skull has to set the autopilot to level them out again. Uh-huh. So I thought that, oh, it will not fly unless it's on autopilot. But then Steve just takes the controls yep. and starts flying the yeah, thing. Yeah, he's like, he's like <laughs> I, can, I can do <laughs> yeah. uh, like a crash landing. Or, or he was like, I can take it down, but it can't go... Anywhere near civilization, right. and uh, yeah, it was it was weird, and it and was also, also like you you're clearly, not even gonna like look for a parachute. You can clearly see out the window that there's a giant ice sheet directly beneath yeah. you that you probably could land on. Yeah, and also when she's like, "Oh, let's go, we'll get Howard. Let's get Howard. Howard can land it," and Tommy Lee Jones like leaves the room so that she could say goodbye. Why doesn't he just go and get Howard so that Howard can just be like come in and be like, "Hey Steve, let's do this. Let, let's try this. Let's try that." Like it's like he they all just give quickly. up very yeah. quickly. Every yeah, everybody yeah. kind of gives up very quickly. Yeah. yeah. They're all like, "Well, he has to be frozen." So <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> You guys saw the beginning of the movie, right? We know where this is going. <laughs> Yeah, it was like they wrote the beginning of the movie, and then they're like, how are we going to get Captain into the ice? Okay, so we're going to put him on this plane, Yeah, and this plane has bombs on it. Mm-hmm. They're not armed, but they are bombs. They are bombs. Mm-hmm. Now, now ask me if he could <laughs> land. Can he, can he land the plane, writer, person? Yes. <laughs> But no. Okay, why? <laughs> because of reasons. Got it. Let's write it. Take it to script. Got it. Got it. Perfect. <laughs> and then the movie. Oh, it doesn't end yet. No, no. No. It crashes. This is when Nikki thinks the movie ends. Yeah, that is true. I <laughs> but I have to remind her that it's not over yet. Yeah, I forgot. I was like, oh, do yeah. we get an end credit scene? And Thomas is like, the movie's not done yet. And I was like, oh, <laughs> right. We have this weird extra scene. Right. Yeah, so then Steve wakes up again in the recovery room, apparently. The fake recovery room. Yeah, when there's a baseball game playing on a radio. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, way to go, guy, whoever was in charge of figuring out what to put on the radio like for him when he wakes up. you the one game that he was at, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> You could literally, know, you could literally. Game from before all of this You happened. could literally have picked any baseball game that happened after he was frozen. Right. And also could have been any, like, not a baseball game that was the Dodgers either. Like, mm-hmm. why did they pick the Dodgers? Why didn't they just pick a team that was... Well, I think they wanted it to be something that was familiar to him. Like, they probably knew that he liked because he's from New York. He probably liked... Yeah, but he probably knows what the other teams right. are. Right. If he likes... A te- I know at least... <laughs> I know at least one other baseball team. I like baseball. Right. Yeah. They the Tigers. They could have done the... World Series? Yeah, a, they could have done a baseball the thing? Cubbies. Yeah. Yeah. They could yeah. have done the White Sox and the Red Sox. Yeah, they Sox. could have played the Stanley Cup. They could have played the Stanley Cup and done a touchdown. <laughs> 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 the movie ends and uh, the end credit scene is just a trailer for the Avengers. So. It really is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's disappointing. I, right. um, yep. Uh, that's the movie. Yeah. Jessica. Yes. How have your thoughts about this movie changed? <laughs> Since you saw it yesterday. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Nikki. Nikki, how have your thoughts of this movie changed? I still think this movie is pretty awesome. Uh, the end plane crash thing really bothered me this yeah. time. And some of the battle montage seemed a little cornier than I remember it being compared to the newer Marvel movies. But I have to forgive the fact that it was nine years ago yeah. also. Yeah. Thomas, how have your feelings changed about this movie? Uh, I think there are uh, parts of this movie that I like more and parts of this movie that I like less. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I was first watching this movie, I didn't really like the musical part. Oh, okay. Really? Because that wasn't where I was at at that point. Yeah. In 2011. Mm -hmm. I wasn't into musicals. Mm -hmm. But I enjoy it now. It's fun. You weren't a part of the family yet. Yeah indoctrinated yeah. Uh, i think the uh the battle montage that they kind of that they go through is a little tired mm-hmm. uh and the the end battle at the end the airplane kind of just like meh whatever right mm-hmm. i really am invested in this movie 
for the first act, act and a half. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it just kind of peters out. Yeah. I feel like. I would say. Yeah. But I think overall, it's pretty good. I enjoy it. Nice. I wish that they would have used the extra time that they had by skipping so many action scenes to actually develop some of those characters a little more. Yeah. But I really, really liked it. It was yeah. really fun. It and it got me amped for the rest of the Yeah. Series. And the Agent Carter series is on Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. So if you want to watch it. Yeah. I am interested. I in watched it. the first season of it. It was pretty good. Yeah. When it when it was on TV. I watched it. So okay. it was pretty good. So I would be interested in going to watch it again. He dislikes her. Well, yeah. I mean, I do. So I'm not gonna deny that. <laughs> social so. media fi. So social media. If you guys would like to get in contact with us or just, you know, write something nice or whatever, you can reach us on social media. We have a Facebook and a Instagram and a Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you can find us at all those places at YPIP Podcast. Perfect. Yeah. Cut and dry. Let's move yeah. on. Go ahead. <laughs> like, like, share it. All the good stuff you do on those. Retweet. Tell a friend. Everything. Tell some friends to do the same things. Please, please do. Yes. We want friends. Yes. We want followers. All right. So it's time for. I can't do it as good as I did it that very first time yeah. that it just came out. I'm yeah. sorry. So I have a couple. First one is a traditional FMK. Mm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, of my which of my seven <laughs> boyfriends? <laughs> oh my! I'm so excited. What let's is do. It? Let's do the three main protagonists. Okay. So, Steve, uh huh, Bucky, mm -hmm. Peggy. Ooh. I would. I would marry the fuck out of Captain America. I would marry him because I get to sex him. <laughs> <laughs> and because I'm wife and being married to nice guy sounds great. I oh, would I fuck Bucky or would I fuck Peggy? Those are great oh, questions. Oh, that's a tough one. Oh, man. Shit. <laughs> Can I passionately kiss Peggy before I kill her? Yes. I'll do that. Okay. And I will fuck Bucky. Okay. Because his name rhymes fuck with fuck. Bucky. Bucky, Bucky. I would fuck Bucky. <laughs> What do you guys? Uh, oh man. Based on what I know of these characters' personalities mm -hmm. throughout the entirety of the series, mm -hmm. I would marry Bucky. Mm. I like his sense of humor. But he seems like a playboy. I'm just saying I think he would I think he'd cheat. Oh? Yeah? I mean I think so. I don't oh. know. I don't know. I could be. And he does become evil later. Here we go. Okay. You marry Steve. Uh huh. I marry Bucky. Okay. <laughs> we we switched. Then... <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We're fine. <laughs> you fucking wife swap. That we wife swap. Shit. I'll do it. I'll do that. I'll do that. That's Hell cool. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we got Thomas. He's gonna marry and fuck Peggy. <laughs> uh, yeah, he absolutely is. I would marry Peggy. Mm hmm. I would. Fuck Steve mm -hmm. and kill Bucky. He's going to die anyway. Well, and he's, he's going to come back. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> All right. Next one. Mm -hmm. If you had the opportunity to be super soldierized, mm. go through the whole process. Yes. With the fighter rays. Yes. The fighter. Oh, God. We forgot to talk about <laughs> the fighter rays. The fighter rays. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the vita rays and yeah. all that. Yeah, vitamin to vegemin. Yeah. Ask me the question. Would you do it? Um now. Mm -hmm. Is this for the sole purpose of being a soldier? It's for the sole purpose of being swole. Or is it yeah, a swole purpose, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um if I'm like contractually I would say it's up to you. Okay. I don't know. Hmm. I'm not interested in being a soldier. But I'd be interested in getting the want, swole. You want to be a soldier? <laughs> I would be a soldier, but also they would need to like drug me up with some like Xanax and a bunch of stuff before they gave it to me because I don't think I could be like I would do for it the procedure itself. I would do it not with the intention of being a soldier, but with the intention of being like your Avenger type, like a, a vigilante. Oh, you want to be a superhero. Or, a, or yeah, something yes. like that. Yeah, yeah. I Yes. Like a more private, I don't want to necessarily 
be obligated to any particular government or entity or something like that, just mm-hmm. for the general public good. I can get I down do with it. that. Yeah. yeah, I would. I yeah, I would do it for like for me, mm-hmm. like just to be. I would do it for me so that I could do superhero-y stuff, mm-hmm. but I don't think I would do it to be a soldier, mm-hmm. a soldier. Ooh, what if when you took the superhero soldier serum, is this the next question? And if so, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. What if instead of becoming a soldier, mm-hmm. it heightened what you're super duper good at? Like if I took it, I became like a super crazy, amazing face painter and balloon twister. <laughs> Because I'd take that. <laughs> but you already are. Oh, you're so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> this is going to sound kind of self-deprecating, but I don't really know what I'm super duper good at. Aww. So I don't Same. really know Paul, yeah, what, uh, mm. what it would amplify. Not all of us have our passions at 32. Yeah. It's okay, guys. Just me. They want to punch me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she says with gruited him, no, I'm not at for all. best friend. <laughs> no, I love you. Um, yeah, I would also not really, I don't know. I, I can't think of anything useful that it would amplify. If it amplified what? I feel like it would amplify your funny, like how funny you are. Oh, I think it I would, would just like, be a bitch and like comedian being, or something. Like you'd be like a lot funnier, a lot wittier. Because you're very funny, very witty. Thank you. I can see that. Thank you. If like intention wise uh-huh. it has plays a factor in what it strengthens, I think that it would probably I think I would probably be like more of a healing aspect than a fighting aspect. Okay, okay, okay. cool, 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 cool. But also I think that would be that would be more of like a if I were to choose like an X-Men mutant thing. Like if I could undergo some sort of mutinization, then that would be, but that's a different movie. So do you have another FMK for us? I do have a, uh, X-Men related uh, trivia for this movie. Oh, uh, they were, when they were originally, uh, doing production for the movie, they were trying to figure out ways to get, uh, Wolverine and Magneto cameos in it because they were both alive during world war two. Right. Uh, but they could because Fox owned the rights. So. Right. That's I'm really so glad they didn't do that. Yeah. yeah. I also am. Did you have another FMK? Nope. I have one. Can I have one? Okay. Do it. FMK. Stanley uh-huh. Tucci uh-huh. as Nigel Kipling in The Devil Wears Prada. Uh-huh. Dr. Erkstein in Captain America. Uh-huh. Or Caesar Flickerman in The Hunger Games. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Considering that I think I'm pretty I know what sure I the do. only straight one out of those <laughs> three know, right? is Dr. Erkstein. No, no, okay, okay. Not as an FMK. Rank them one, two, three. Best to worst. Like favorite version friend characters. Wise character. Or like what? favorite, what character? No, I'll you FMK it. it. Okay, okay. I'll okay, FMK okay. it. I was ready to FMK it. I would marry Dr. Erkstein because he seems like a sweet dude. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I would now. Here's here's the tough thing. Mm-hmm. Caesar seems fun, mm-hmm. but is he? Would he be a lazy lay, or like he seems? I don't know. <laughs> Do we <he> fuck? <laughs> <laughs> My thing about Caesar is: is he because he's from the capital? Is he a bad guy? You know what mm. I mean? Or is he just like one of the clueless capital people who right. just like, oh, I don't know. I kind of got, this isn't part, this isn't relevant to my answer, but I kind of get from Caesar when I read the books and watch the movie mm-hmm. that he's trying to help the tributes. I believe so. In the yes. only way that he can. Yeah. I believe so. That was also my impression from reading. I would marry him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because okay. I think that he would, A, he lives in the capital, so I would live True. in District 1. Um, no, it's the capital. Whatever. District one, the cap <laughs> no, the capital. No, oh, district one is yes, not yes, the yes, capital. Yes, 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 yes. She says about her favorite <laughs> that she's literally reading right You're now. You're allowed to be wrong sometimes. Um, it's okay. I am. And so I'd marry him because, because as I he's said. Caesar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would actually probably kill Nigel. I would also because yeah. he's not very I mean, like I know that he really cares about her. 
Mm-hmm. And everything, but... He doesn't really seem to care about much, actually. He doesn't care much about anything else, so I'd probably kill him in Devil Wars Prada. Mm-hmm. And I would... I'd probably fuck... I'd probably fuck the scientist. Okay. I marry the scientist. <laughs> you marry the Caesar. We wife swap there we go. <laughs> Just because I'm, we're finding loopholes. FMK loopholes. Sorry, that was a really I realized that the ball. ring was on that hand now, and I didn't um, want to punch Tom's. you with it. I would. Call Tom. <laughs> I would. Shoes. I think I would fuck Nigel. Yeah. Marry Erstein mm-hmm. and kill Caesar. Okay. I Why think. would you kill Caesar? Uh, it was just my first whack at it. Uh, just because also his Caesar, teeth are very unsettling. That is his true. very unsettling veneers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he just seems like uh, I don't know. I'm not about that energy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I seems a little much. Cool word. That's it. All right, you ready for ratings? Oh yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm ready for the rating. Yes, that I definitely thought of. Do you want me to go first? I would love that. <laughs> I go second. I have one too. All right. Okay. I rate this movie six. Out of six, Chris Evans abs. Nice. I put, I give this rating <laughs> 10 punches to fake Hitler out of 10. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I didn't finish it, I guess. <laughs> so that's just what it is. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. Thanks. It's perfect. I give this movie an 8.5. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Joe. We love you, Joe. Uh, no, uh, I uh, I give this movie shit. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Seven boyfriends out of eight boyfriends <laughs> out, of yes. Chris Evans abs. Out, of, out of out of six car wheels. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Perfect. Good. Perfect. All right, fantastic. All right. We sound so good from Jafar. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba. Wow, I'm impressed that wow. you remember. I can't remember. <laughs> I that can't song. remember the tune to that thing at all. I'm very it's impressed. It's been in my head this whole time. <laughs> Beautiful. But I did want to say one yeah. last thing before we signed off oh. tonight. Go ahead. And that's hey, let's hear it for Captain America. Ugh. <laughs> Thomas's favorite part of the movie Ugh. is when Bucky. Why do they always have to have? Yeah, one? that is pretty bad. Why do they always ha- in movies like in in good movies? Why do they always have to have one line that just makes my skin crawl? <laughs> and that's that line that's in this movie. One. I also was like, oh, okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> like whenever they do a hip hip foray or for whatever, yeah. it's like, oh, just shut up. <laughs> yeah, hip hip forays. Yeah, yeah, we're the only yip ip here. Yeah, yeah. yip ip hooray, here, Captain America. We're going yeah. to bed. Good night, everybody. Good, good night. night. I'm so we sound good from Jafar. We do. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs>